Hey, fun fans. To get you pumped for infinite recharge, our friends at West Coast Products have provided a giveaway of a Spartan number 25 or number 35 chain tensioner. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and let us know in the comments your top prediction for infinite recharge. You can enter in any video that has this intro and the winner will be announced in the fun discord on Saturday, January 4th. So make sure you comment below. First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. So let's get right on into the top 15. Uh, these are going to be in order from 15 to 1, and all three judges will have commentary uh, on the robots. Uh, so let's start off with Team 409. So I'll just jump out and say, um, of the submissions I got, not many really thought about catching the pucks, and those that did typically um, didn't didn't really go deep into the details of how to do that. And so seeing uh, seeing this bot with a net for the pucks to be able to catch, and a really well detailed and well catted net using some sort of string or rubber, whatever, um, it was really cool to see. So I was just I very much enjoyed seeing that, seeing the puck catcher. Um, and that was that was probably my favorite aspect that jumped out to me about this robot. Uh, part about that too is they have an imitation target behind it, so anyone using a targeting system could uh, pretty easily get to that target and be able to shoot accurately into that robot if they have a mechanism that facilitates it. And that that sort of like attention to detail is something I just love. So that's that's uh, especially the imitation target. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I one thing I really liked about this robot was their machine gun style um, hopper system. I thought it was actually pretty cool. It kind of intakes the puck and then pushes it up and then pushes it into the uh, shooter, which is an interesting thing that I saw, and I really liked how they did that. And they also have wires on their battery. So good work on that. Uh, oh, one thing that was kind of bugging me, they've got this neat pan tilt, but they're using a little tiny uh, linear servo actuator. I definitely have some reliability and... Even just like, is it specced to be able to do that concerns? So uh, still need to see that detail. I will say it was yeah. throwing me off. Um, the uh, flex wheels at the front are the Vex flex wheels. But if you, they're, they're colored like the green Andy Mark 35, 35 durometer uh, compliant wheels. So it's just kind of funny thing. Like, that's, that's not quite right. It took me a second to realize what was off about them. <laughs> it was in, <laughs> it just an interesting uh, color choice. Yeah, I didn't know. We sold them in green, but more you know. Yeah, yeah. Funny how that works. Yeah. All right. Uh, great work from Team 409, who uh, took 15th. Let's go ahead and move on to Team 501. I'll just say, um, I, I love the color scheme of this robot. I, some of the, I know that uh, just the aesthetics is not one of the huge uh, categories, but I really enjoyed the color scheme of this robot. I just think it's attractive and well done. Um, it also kind of, I don't think it's meant to be, but it reminds me, uh, some of the parts look like they, uh, the pultruded fiberglass that one of my old teams used. So that's, it's cool to see stuff reminiscent of that, but I think it's meant to just be aluminum. But still, overall, just a very, like, a very aesthetic robot that I enjoyed judging. Yeah, I actually like this robot a lot. I thought the turret idea could have been done a little bit better, but the idea of turreting was pretty uh, interesting and might like play out to be useful during competition season if done right. I also like their speed. It was a nice 14 FPS, which is good to see and probably very controllable. The one thing I did note that I didn't like that they used the six tooth gears that uh, Vex sells now. I haven't had too much personal use with them, but I feel like six tooth gears on the uh, directly driven gearbox would wear out really quickly and have some issues. So I'd stray away from that. Yeah, for this robot, uh, kind of interesting. They detailed this thing in their scouting uh, document where they would kind of dribble the puck. So they'd shoot it out when they're passing through zone and then intake it right afterwards. They've also got this neat system on their intake where they've got a, a roller kind of horizontally on the top and then another roller in the back to hold the puck in place while the shooter belts spin up, but that's all powered off the same motor. Uh, just kind of a neat way to use one motor to do multiple things more efficiently when you don't need a bunch of different motors and PDP slots taken up. Yeah, 
so that was a uh, really good job uh, from Team MIK, uh, or MKI, sorry. Um, all right, uh, let's, you, let's go on to Team 363. Brian, what did you think of them? Yeah, Team 363 had a lot of uh, cool, I guess, resources attached to them. They had lots of renders, three step files, and actually even some videos. So I really like that they did that. Their robot also had a really cool catching mechanism that was really wide and I thought could actually work well and had a good um, pass-through style 2018-254 uh, intake. So and, intake and shooter. So I thought that was actually overall like a great integrated design and they put everything together really well. And um, I gave them a lot of points for effectiveness because I think it would work uh, really well, I guess, yeah. I, I enjoyed the uh, expanding hopper, very reminiscent of 2017. I liked that a lot. And then <laughs> they catted the wires to their various mechanisms, like from the PDP, like very like absolute actual paths through the robot. That um, was, I think, pretty much the only team that went that far with catting the wires um, all throughout the robot. And I very much enjoyed seeing that. Um, I'd be interested to see like how exactly what they did in the CAD, you know, the sweeps, whatever how they how they accomplish that but i liked it a lot <laughs> yeah uh catting wires is fun with all the different ways you can do it yep. um yeah. great great job uh for the team oh i'm sorry okay so uh i don't know it seems like i'm like digging deep into some of the scouting document stuff but uh <laughs> they also said they had autonomous catching using a limelight uh that's an interesting concept i don't see that working out very well at all especially with this intake design uh I mean, at least with the wings, that would probably work. Also, uh, onto the wings and expanding, it seems like a puck could get stuck deep inside the robot pretty easily, and then you're kind of screwed. Like in 2017, the pilot's dropping a gear into the robot, and you can't pick up a gear for the rest of the match. It seems like that would definitely be a potential issue here. Yeah, sorry for uh, cutting you off there beforehand. It's fine. Um, it's fine. But uh, really, uh, really good job from Team 363. Uh, so let's move on to the team who ranked 12th, uh, which is team 281. Uh, Brian, what did you think of them? Yep, team 281 technical difficulties. Uh, I really like their pocketing. They had lots of pocketing. Um, so have fun on the CNC with that one or whatever you use to do that. Uh, I thought their belly pan was uh, just not really there they had way too much pocketing on that and i didn't really like how they did it um i feel like it it kind of defeats the purpose of the belly pan which is for like structural support somewhat um but i did like how they had the eight wheel drive i didn't see that on many other teams and i thought that may play out to be useful here um and their turret was was well done they had tensioning systems which was something that a lot of teams um forgot to include and they also used shoulder bolts with bushings which is a technique that i really like to use for their pivoting system, um, which is always clean and using the oil like bushings makes everything really simple and easy to manufacture. Yeah. Uh, on that belly pan too, even though they like had some massive pockets, there was still a Falcon motor for the turret rotation that was intersecting that. So that, that seemed very yeah. out of place when the rest of this robot was pretty solid on details. It, uh, it, it's just an enjoyable, like the seeing everything in the kind of the arm, the shooter, the, the turret, it was really well packaged. Um, I like some of the uh, the front-facing details. I like the pocketed steel gears. Um, I like all that. So overall, it was, it was a really fun submission to look through. They've, they've, also got a, got... they've got a lot going on in the finer details on that arm, and it, it works out pretty well. I love the way they did the linkage system here. Just the whole way oh, that yeah. rotates and the gearbox built into one of the arms. That was like, yeah. I have not seen that for a long time in FRC robots. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, really cool things going on uh, here. Um, great to see from them. All right, uh, let's move on to Team 469. Uh, Troy, why don't you start us off there? All right, so uh, when I saw this robot, I'm kind of like, okay, so you, you've played my hands. You've forced me to give out a five and a creativity, like no matter what. So they, as Koth mentioned, uh, I'll look another robot. They've got this vertical puck shooting. And then they also have it so they can run it backwards and kind of roll a puck out the front of the robot, which would be interesting to see how far across the field. Uh, of course, the elephant in the room, Kiwi Drive with six Falcon motors. Uh, yes. That seems incredibly traction limited, but you know, 
we'll go with it. Um, I support it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's also like only 60 pounds, so traction limitation seems like it would be a main issue with defense here. I do yeah, like that they uh, oh, they went into the uh, the COTS Omnis and changed the color of those to match their color scheme and the the compliant wheels. They like very cohesive on the uh, on the colors and the aesthetic front, which I appreciate. Oh no, that gear. Oh no. Oh no. I don't. Yeah. I don't support that gear. Yes. Oh. I uh, I found it pretty hard to judge them on the effective category because I, I mean, who knows what this robot's gonna do in competition? To be honest, so yeah. I gave them the benefit of the doubt and put them a little, a little bit higher than they probably should have, but if it works, they're getting the 10. But no, overall, just a very fun robot to look at, to judge. Yeah, uh, that gear without fillets kind of hurt me inside, but also, oh well. Massive stress stress concentrations, but yeah. Yeah, that, that too. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go on to our next team, uh, which is Team 257. So 257 was fun. Uh, this is the Hyatt robot. or um, And so they, if you, if you think it looks strange, you're right. Um, this team endeavored to make mit, uh, most of the structural parts of the robot injection molded. So possible to be made from an injection mold. And so it's just silly. It's kind of a gimmick, but it's actually really well done. They've got a relatively simple concept, but they've got a ton of detail going on. Um, this robot would be astronomically expensive to produce, but if you needed 100,000 of them, wouldn't be that bad. And so it's very fun. They've got a real big gear turret, a uh, really, really big gear that's part, you know, injection molded part. Yeah, yeah, Tyler pulled up all the parts. Um, Really cool to see. I also love the name uh, John Hyatt, the inventor of injection molding, also one of the inventors of plastic. So uh, very cool. S same team who did the Casey Jones pneumatic robot last year. So I, I enjoyed looking through the submission quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, I really like this submission as well. Um, one thing that was really cool is they made a pretty long brochure packet for us judges, which yep. was really, really cool. Um, lot, like Lots of great renders in that. But one thing to note for them for future reference is that they had a um, metal on plastic um, turret like mechanism. So their outside turret gear was injection molded, obviously. But that means that they're going to have a metal on plastic meshing and that wears out super quickly. So I'd say watch out for that. And um, I didn't really like the V-groove bearing turret setup. As mentioned before, V-groove bearings are just not it, man. I was not digging the intake on this robot, to be honest. Uh, they've got this kind of thing that, like, it's a roller on, like, it seems like it's just a passive hinge that flips down. You see that horizontal roller there? So apparently it would flop down in that state. But this intake seems like you got to be, like, nuts on to just, like, drive right into the puck to actually get it into that. But uh, I don't think the intake design was their main focus <laughs> when designing this robot. <laughs> no, yeah. I, think, I think they had other priorities, but... All in all, yeah. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Yeah, they had to make sure everything was actually moldable. That just additional challenge to designing FRC yeah. robots. They didn't include draft though. If they'd gotten draft into the models, I'd have, uh, they might have won. They might have won. Yeah. Drafts and fillets. It's the best part of designing for injection molding. Yeah. I want to yeah. see them make the bomb for this robot or the cost oh, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that'd be really fun to see. Garrett, Garrett would do it. Garrett would try. <laughs> yeah, here's the tooling. This is where it's done. Here's everything. Yeah. We're on it. <laughs> awesome robot. Awesome to see uh, the injection molded. Uh, let's go out and move. Go ahead and move on to team 250. Uh, Cawthorn, why don't you tell us a little bit about them to start? Yeah, 250. Uh, team name Cheesecake Mechanum Swerve. Um, very quickly, you see that they spent lots and lots of time on the memes. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> um, uh, but overall, they also, aside from that, had a very well done robot. Uh, there's a lot going on. It's very complex. It's actually really well packaged. Um, everything looks like it worked pretty well. I mean, this is this is a good robot. This is something that I could see in person and see it doing quite well. Um, it's very realistically done and it's just well executed. Um, they have some cool details going on with some of the packaging and how they do done some of the gear, um, the gear reductions. 
And then they provided lots and lots and lots of renders, sometimes in strange locations, like a school hallway. But overall, it was uh, this was a, a very impressive submission and probably one of uh, the best intakes that I saw. Yeah, I agree with Cawthorne's uh, intake point. I really like their intake, how it kind of, I'm not really sure what that link is just called, but it's really cool. It kind of goes out and down. Yep. And I thought that was really creative. And they also even uh, included the wires and the wire harness. So big ups on that. Um, it was really cool. I didn't really like the huge sheet metal piece that kind of covers the whole robot. It clips like everything and doesn't actually fit on properly. So next time, I guess, don't do that. But other than that, uh, they were missing some tensioning on the chain and their drivetrain gussets were really, really thin. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I also really enjoyed the way they kind of split up the intake and how the kind of intake on the arm, if you will, like kind of slots into the robot-based intake. So the two sides are like kind of independent and everything. Um, see, the wires on there, I was also like, the wires are there, but they're kind of interesting. But, you know, you have them and a lot of other teams don't. I also think I measured, and it seemed like the drive gear boxes would start rubbing on the ground pretty quick. But like, you know, it's aluminum; it slides. It's it's probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it not just the robot looks great. Um, I can really appreciate all of the the memes uh, that they had going on. Uh, you know, meme the meme on the bottom of the robot, just top quality, uh, top quality meme lords. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our eighth-ranked team, uh, which is team number 438. Uh, Cawthorn, why don't you start us off here? Yeah, so these are the cheesy oofs. Um, and uh, going into it, it's very clearly I, what I thought of was like a knockoff of the cheesy poof style. And turns out it apparently was actually members of the Team 254. Um, so I was, I was giving them some credit from copying someone else's style, and turns out they were copying their own. But overall, uh, it's a really good, it's really well-made robot. Um, they do have the catcher, the feed me that you can see there uh, that I appreciated. Again, I most of my submissions did not give any consideration towards receiving pucks. And so I did appreciate seeing that. Um, though I would have maybe liked to have seen more than just like poly, thin polycarb as the catcher for those um, pretty heavy pucks. Um, overall, really cool intake um, through the back and then up to a uh, shooter on a wrist, just well executed everywhere. Lots of pocketing. I do. I did think that the um, the wrist joint or the the gearbox combined wrist joint for the shooter was maybe a little bit uh, lacking on support. Needed to be a little stronger. Uh, but overall, they had just very well executed all the way through. Um, uh, and it was a fun submission to check out. And they, like, you can see uh, some of the things with like the carbon fiber rods. They really went above and beyond and kind of. Uh, letting their design style carry through, and I always enjoy that. I, I'm a big fan of people's design styles like being well incorporated. Um, probably my main takeaway, though, their trigger for their shooter, I don't think it would actually work. I think it would jam. Uh, it, was a, it was kind of a pneumatic linkage, almost. It was like a one, one rotation linkage um, that I think would have been very, very, very close to over-centering and jamming in the real life. So, Yeah, I yeah, I'm not... Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. I kind of had some concerns about the superstructure. Like it seems to yeah. be thin wall one by one, like and catching those pucks and then supporting the shooter mechanism as well. I would have liked to see some cross bracing there or just like I feel like I could walk up to this robot and just kind of give it a shove and it would start shaking a bit. Uh, yeah. Not vibing well with me. It also <laughs> seemed like the way they did their intake. So they've got like a very small kind of through bumper intake and there's kind of a dead zone where it seems like nothing is actively contacting the puck so the ro the puck would get yeah. into into the robot and then it would just kind of float there like there's about half of an inch before it goes to the uptake to the shooter yeah i something that contra mentioned which was the piston pushing shooting linkage thing going on i actually really like that i thought it was a really cool oh. catch and push mechanism um it also it might have over centered i didn't check but i liked the idea of just using a piston to do all of your, I guess, puck control for your shooter. Um, one thing that I also saw that Cawthon mentioned was how they attached the shooter um, to the mainframe. It was with two L brackets that were really weak. So maybe consider adapting that with a better, I guess, method next time. 
And they also had a really, really cantilevered sprocket on their gearbox. Yeah. yeah which is, yeah, cantilever's not good, man. So <laughs> add another bearing and fix that up. Yeah. Oh, oh, and on those L brackets, yeah. um, I think some of them, it would be incredibly difficult to put the screws in because they're yeah. all facing inwards towards each other. It's like, what? I think they th that reminded me. They had a cantilevered shooter wheels, which I was not a fan of at all. And they had like the axle right next to a plate. They could have added another bearing very easily, and they didn't. So that that annoyed me. Um, and then, yeah. So overall, really good submission. Yeah, really good submission. I appreciate how their robot's name was Dead End, which is in fact a Decepticon. Uh, keeping up with the poof style. Um, all right, uh, so let's move on to team 496, uh, who ranked seventh. Brian, why don't you start us off with them? Yeah, so team 496, um, I really liked their robot integration. Everything seemed really manufacturable and realistic, which was what I look for often in Catathon robots. Um, the way they mounted their four bar was a little sketchy, and I don't think it would work in real life, but I did like how they added the four bar. I thought, I thought it was a good addition. Um, I, overall, I think each aspect of the robot was straightforward and done well, but integration could have been, um, I guess, a little bit better. And their elevator seemed really flimsy to me, kind of remind me of 195 from 2018. I mean, I guess it worked that year, but with your intake being this big, I don't think it would work very well. And uh, on their elevator, the way they did it is like incredibly sketchy. There's some like half depth pockets into it. And the bearings kind of ride in that half depth pocket. So like that seems incredibly sketchy to me. Like you you've got a lot of tolerance stack up you've got to worry about there. And it just does not seem like it would survive any kind of impact. So I like the concept of the single mast elevators. Um, I like that concept, but I do agree that they needed a little bit more fine execution to make sure that it stayed robust enough. I did, however, really like the whole concept of like the swinging up the four bar. Um, just the entire, I just really like that. It just kind of took me by surprise. I don't think that was what I was, when I took the first look at it, um, that's not the mechanism that I thought it was. And I really enjoyed like the clever nature of that. Um, so it's really cool, but I agree with some of the execution comments on the elevator, but they did include a string on the elevator. They cat it in the string, which is very much appreciated. Yeah, uh, really, uh, really nice job uh, catting in the string. Uh, it's good to see that your string's going to clear everything for sure. All right, uh, let's move on to our sixth ranked team, uh, which is team number 214. Troy, why don't you start us off? Yeah, so this robot is very visually appealing. They've got, for the most part, a lot of, um, well, it seems like they just, instead of, you know what, we could use 16th inch uh, wall tube, but what if we used 8th inch and pocketed it? <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of places where it's just like they've gone with the heavier and then pocketed it out, which I mean for Catathon, that looks really cool. I'm not sure about manufacturing time in real life. Uh, they've got this kind of weird electronics mezzanine because they're such a tiny robot. They need that additional space. So there's like two layers of electronics stacked up on top of each other. Uh, they're also running at 20 feet per second, which seems a bit fast to me. Yeah, I this robot overall gave me some FTC vibes, like being really <laughs> small, really pocketed, um, that kind of stuff. But I liked how their intake integrated and kind of like went all the way back and into their handoff. I thought that was really cool. Um, the one thing I didn't like is their dual-sided roller shooter that was directly driven from Versa's. Um, just something about that doesn't seem doesn't seem like it's achieved. I don't really like. I like when teams have the. Uh, gyroscopic help of using a one-sided shooter. I think it really helps with stability and aiming. So the two-sided thing, yeah, I don't think it would work very well. I will say, uh, I'm not sure if it was mentioned, but they had a quality name. Their team name was Confusion360. And I just, I appreciate that mightily. Um, the other thing, when I first opened it up, I honestly thought it was done by like four uh, members of the FRC team 4414 with the teal bumpers and just like, you know, like the pocketing style. Um, but it was interesting to see that, that that wasn't the case. But uh, overall, just like a very attractive robot that was well thought out in kind of all of the details. Um, there were some you know spots here and there where they may have fallen short, but everything on the robot had thought and had consideration put towards it. Which doing that with that amount of detail in three days is kind of insane. 
Yeah, uh, you know, really good looking robot. And uh, as it was mentioned earlier, it's cool to see teams having multiple different members compete. Um, and this was another member of team 3324 yeah. uh, who had two or three other teams. So that's really cool to see there. Um, but, you know, really good robot. Uh, let's move on to another great robot. We're getting into our top five now. Yep. Uh, really exciting. Uh, Catherine, why don't you start us off uh, with talking about team 454? Yeah, Team Iron Kittens. This one might have been my favorite submission to look through. Um, this robot's whack. It reminds me a lot of 971 in 2016, uh, the way they've got this arm going on. But if you look closely, you actually see to fit inside, to stow and get inside the frame perimeter, they've actually got the entire arm uh, mounted through like a linear, linear bearings that can slide back and forth, forwards and backwards. This is kind of unnecessary. Seems a bit excessive just to be able to stow within frame rotor. Seems like there could have been other things they could have done. But you know what? I love it. It's creative. It's really cool. Really took me by surprise. Um, their intake seems good. It seems effective, but it does seem bulky to me. That was probably one of the one thing that I was looking at uh, with a with a virtual four bar with a, the single joint arm. You really don't want um, a heavy intake. You really don't want unnecessary mass at the top of that and this one takes pretty chonky but otherwise i really enjoyed it i love the hexagonal uh drivetrain i love the uh the doing the west coast drive where the middle wheels are on the outside and the omni wheels are on the inside i love that um overall just a very fun robot yeah i, I really like their gusseting work um something that really impresses me is when teams use gussets effectively and i think this is one of the teams that had like creative uses for gussets i guess i could say um their battery was well held something i didn't see in a lot of other robots so that's good and like Catherine said that extension and contraction mechanism um that gave them a five for me in creativity it was yep. really cool to see them add that um and especially it seemed like it was actually really strong it used like two inch um diameter pipes tubing or something so it was like wasn't gonna break Yes, uh, kind of adding on to that, though it seems like they were using kind of an underpowered cylinder, in my opinion. It seemed yeah, like they might not have enough force to, especially if that, um, as RC pointed out in 1323, those aluminum tubes started wearing in with the linear bearings over time, and you start getting a lot of friction. Um, one of the other things I noticed, they've also got the Robo Rio on the bottom of the robot, but uh, it's in such a position that if you plugged in the Ethernet cable, you'd be like rubbing an Ethernet cable on the carpet constantly, which is... Um, yeah, or even if you just want to plug anything into the Rio, it's not in a spot to do that. I, I called that exact out, problem out on my uh, feedback. Upside Rio is cute, but wires would for sure be dragging the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I totally agree with that. But overall, uh, this is just a great robot to look through. I, I recommend like a couple of these really wacky robots. I recommend to everybody to go download the CAD and look through them. They're really fun. There's some cool stuff going on in here. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited to download the cat of this robot and take a look through it uh, after the after we're over here. Uh, but yeah. really cool to see. Uh, I really like the 971. As you said, it reminds me a lot of 971 and 16, um, which is one of my favorite robots. Um, all right, uh, let's go on to our highest rookie seed. So this is their first time competing, and they took in the four spot. Um, so Troy, why don't you tell us about Team 479? So. Uh... Brushless motors, brushless motors everywhere. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is using basically just the Mini Neos and the Falcon 500s. Uh, they've got this really neat way they've integrated this kind of back take into their frame. So they've got this normal horizontal roller, centers it into the bot, and they've got all these rollers that are integrated right into almost their drive frame that kind of pulls it back to their arm. A lot of really nice detailing on this robot. I've seen the Catathon, they've got like the underglow, really solid. Uh, green and black theme, though uh, kind of minus points. It seems like they were missing the coloring for the Falcons, even though those are black and green. So like, come on, guys, You're so close. Uh, really nice power transmission systems is what I was noting a lot. And they put their mechanics on the right way. <laughs> put those on the right direction. That's very much appreciated. Uh, especially, and they really went above and beyond with the, aside from the Falcons, the, the coloring, the underglow is cool. Um, they, they've got an interesting uh, shifting gearbox, even though shifting gearboxes 
uh, weren't as common this year round. Um, they have an interesting way of doing theirs that I really appreciated, kind of a more novel concept um, that I enjoyed seeing. So 1.5 stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw those just uh, popped up on Chief Delphi recently, and they've yep. started. So I, I really like seeing I'm that. I do one of them now, but I can't. Yeah, yeah. Too bad shifting gearboxes are lame. Yeah, I really like that. The one thing I wanted to know on that shifting gearbox was the way they actually implemented the shifter. I feel like that arm wouldn't actually move that uh, bottom piece, I guess. It, it would just does, two actually, because I've really. got a picture of 118 running that like exact thing with the same shifter mechanism on that ball shifter. Damn. I don't know. It seems kind of sketchy to me, but if it works, it works, I guess. Yeah, um, I did see it before I saw it. Yeah, one thing I wanted to note, though, was uh, their wavy plates that they have connected to their intake and their drivetrain. The minimum diameter between the two sides is the exact diameter of the puck. So if any manufacturing or assembly tolerances is off, the puck wouldn't go through the intake. So just something to note there. Yeah, I, uh, I really like the color scheme. Uh, just one of my favorite color schemes. Robot somewhat reminds me of a non-swerve 2471 from this year uh, with how that intake looks with the arm. Um, but, you know, really, really nice job. Really great to see a rookie up this high. Um, so very nice job to them. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.